This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. And so there, there's so much of that going on. Now, we can go a little bit further. This is one of my favorite quote, quotes out of Dune. Observe the plans within plans within plans. This is how the Illuminati works. They never come at you one way, and this is something Donald Trump is uh, unfortunately learning. They will come at you seven ways. They have plans within plans within plans within plans. They're, they're, they're GMOing this at the same time. They're genetic engineering this at the same time. And, and, and all of it is, this is good for you. We're going to embed Roundup in your corn. It's good for you. Don't you want to eat a little frog? We'll put that in your green beans. It's good for you. They, they present it as something good when there's always another side, there's another plan, and they will plan over hundreds of years. Yeah. One of the things I show in the Shiner Directive is that they were waiting millennia for the watchers to return. They knew they could not get the job done until it was the time of the beginning of the release of the watchers. So, and, and when you figure out 70 generations from the time of Enoch, according to the book of, of Enoch, it comes to about the 21st century. And so in the 19th century, they've got to infect us with a mind virus to prepare us for the watcher so we get eugenics, evolution, and spiritism. Wow. And it all came together in a threefold cord and created something called Nazis. Okay? Because that, that was the three fundamental tenets of, of Nazis is to figure out how to, how to do that because they know the old ones were coming back and they're wanting to, to advance to the place that they would not be subjugated by them but they would be their equals when they, got, when, they, when they came up out of the ground. Wow. It's a part of what Hitler was trying to do. And so there's plans within plans, and the first one's the Internet. How many know the Internet's a good thing right now, but it, it's, there, there's a lot of bad stuff on the Internet. It's, it's not just preaching of the gospel, and they're trying to control information. They're trying to do all these things. But it was originally given as a good thing. Yeah. But now they're doing some other things with it, aren't they? And, well, we're, we're going to get into this in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Because we're on the Internet 2.0. they got 3.0, 4.0, 5.0 of the Internet planned. What I think is interesting is they're using virtual reality. And this is actually from a hokey Stephen King movie that was done back in the 90s. You know, and now looking at it, I remember way back in, you know, like 91, 92, this was supposed to be state of the art. And now you look back up and say, that is the most hokey thing I have ever seen in my life. And I don't actually advise you to, to watch it because well, the, he, the concept is he takes this guy that probably has an IQ of about 80, okay? And he puts VR goggles on. And what I got here is an image. There's, there's like flashes of light and all of a sudden all these old, ancient, archaic symbols begin to be, begin to be implanted into his mind. All occultic. They were every one of them occultic as he was wearing these VR goggles, and as that was embedded into this slow man's mind, it began to raise his intelligence. And as he kept under this therapy of VR, 
all of a sudden he started developing telekinesis and all these things and he actually uh, and now his IQ is way above the scientist that's doing this and and he says listen uh, I, I, I thought you were doing something old uh, new but what you did is you resurrected within me something very old wow. he was a sorcerer looking to become a god wow. and they told us in the movie what part of VR is doing you know in China today with some of the new video games that are VR there are children dying because they get so caught up in the video game they won't even take time to hydrate and they end up dying of dehydration it is so addictive and now but now you know we got our smartphone and you can get these real cool goggles from Google and you can pop your iPhone in there and look I got VR <laughs> I can be programmed real easy by the devil, and you know, it was just $29.95. <laughs> Not realizing subliminally what they can put into that feed that goes into your subconscious mind. I used to be a good Christian, but now I VR. I don't want to go to church anymore. I'm becoming something else. They go on Internet of Things. Anybody ever heard that? Internet of Things. One of these days when they get 5G set up and everything, uh, er everything's going to be connected to your refrigerator, can talk to your stove, and your stove can talk to your dryer. And your Why does my refrigerator need to talk to my dryer? <laughs> what are they going to talk about? <laughs> it's all gathering data. is all it is and they've been sneaky about it guys you can say I got me an old stove they've been putting the chips in, in, in our appliances for the past 30 years wow. with no security wow. it's just waiting to be turned on wow. because you want to know the truth the biggest thing of the internet is you they're wanting to mine data from you they're pulling so much data you know uh, I, I have marveled my, my first my first computer was a uh, was a, a, the original PC and I remember when I got a 30 megabyte hard drive oh I thought I'll never fill this thing up you know and now we, we talk about terabytes and some of us have a hard time you know even comprehending petabytes they're gathering so much information on everyone uh, uh, how many times a minute you breathe to what you like to watch to what you do on the internet all of it is being pooled by every device that you have and they are creating zettabytes of information that are so big they can't even put them up in the cloud they have retrofitted semis that are nothing more than a glorified hard drive to take it from data center to data center in fact there are ships the size of oil tankers filled nothing with data because we are the thing of the internet that they're looking for. Wow. I don't know about you, but that, that makes me look a little bit different about my smartphone. They're talking about with the coming revolution that we're getting ready to head into. They're saying within the next 10 years, for us in America, with the technology that we have now, we're about ready to make a 100-year leap in the next 10 years. Think about that for a minute. A hundred years ago, we had horse and buggy. We went from that to a man on the moon to, to iPhones in our pocket that has more power than what they used to put the man on the moon with. And you, 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 see, you see that paradigm, and now they're getting ready to leap us another hundred years in the next ten years. That's frightening. They're getting ready to build G5 Global Internet. G5 is problematic. Why is it problematic? I was just talking with one of the security guards. He said, do you see what's in the news? And I said, well, it's in one of the, the, the countries over in Europe. He said they, they, they set up a G5 tower and turned it on, and all the cattle begin to try to kill each other. I'm thinking, that ain't good. <laughs> Within a five-mile radius of the tower... They would either start running into things or running into each other trying to kill each other. And see what they want to do is upgrade us from 4G to 5G. All the towers get upgraded, but then they're going to put 3,000 satellites into orbit so that G5 literally carpets the entire planet. That you can be, you know, on the, on the 
you know, on one side it looks great. You can be in the deepest, darkest, you know, jungle of Africa, and your wife can still call you. It's not even a long-distance call, glory to God, you know, and all these different things. But they don't tell you the flip side because they always present one thing to you while they're doing something else. Okay? Don't look at that man behind the curtain. We're doing something we don't want you to see. But it's so that they can control. It's a control mechanism that there won't be one place that you can go that is not recorded. It's going to be recorded how many breaths that you take while you were there, your heart rate, your heart rate. Everything that you did is going to be recorded in one way or another to gather data. And the first level of that is controlling you. Okay? Controlling you. But there's more to it than that. You see, there's something they're trying to build called the singularity. The singularity. What's that? Well, it's, you know, they say, well, simply when machines get smarter than us. It's not just that, guys. It's when they have a machine that becomes sentient, according to them. It reaches the place it has gathered so much data that it becomes alive. Maybe it's the image of the beast. Don't know. But I, I've looked at what experts have written about this, and they say, well, you know, the, the, there's, there's the myth of this, but they think if they pull all this data together, that this thing can literally, and it becomes their God. You know, the first day, it'll wipe away poverty. The second day, it'll wipe away hunger. The third day, it'll wipe away disease. And yeah, the fourth day, it'll wipe away you. I don't think that we're ever going to get something that, that by itself is going to get sentient. I think what they're, because they talk about 5G and everything, it's the global brain, it's the global heart. They're setting up a neural network that I believe that a watcher one day will inhabit. And it, all of a sudden, it's alive! Yes, yeah, Frankenstein! <laughs> they're after that. And how many know it's going to promote the New World Order? It's going to promote the Antichrist? It's going to promote a lot of things. The next one, I think, robotic enforcement and, and the public, uh, the Plato's Republic. Plato's Republic distilled it down into some simple things. He saw society having three levels of citizens. The elite overlords that are benevolent and just for us all, but they know better than us, and they're, they'll control everything. And then we're kind of the worker bees that take care of everything. And just to keep us in line, they have this elite enforcement army to keep us in line. That was really the republic that he envisioned. But I, I'm finding out that everything that, that is going on today is being weaponized. How many know your food's being weaponized? The news is being weaponized? Our schools have been weaponized. How many know, uh, well, we need to have everybody making $15 an hour at working at McDonald's. Well, it's a, it's a living wage. No, it's not because they're all getting replaced by robots. What it did is it brought up how much it cost to operate that restaurant to the place where it was economically feasible for them to bring in robotics. You see, there's always something going on. I've been keeping an eye on a company called uh, Boston Dynamics. They're the ones that make the robots for the military. Google bought it out. I thought, oh, no, they're going to build the Antichrist, you know, kind of thing. But what's interesting is this last year it was sold to SoftBank of Asia. And I'm thinking, that's interesting. And, and then I found out that one of the main investors in SoftBank of Asia is Saudi Arabia. First of all, could you imagine RoboCop Sharia law enforcers? You see, there are already places within the Emirates that they have RoboCops that enforce law. There's a lot of things in AI that's a lot closer than they. They say within three years, your tennis shoes are going to be smarter than you. Why I need that smart of a tennis shoe, I don't know. It's going to be crunching, you know, quantum physics calculations while I'm walking. I don't know why I need that. But they're bragging how everything is going to be embedded in intelligence to try to, to, try to, to harness AI. That, and in fact, within a year or so, when you, when you call tech support, you know, one of these, like your credit card company, and all of a sudden they instantly know everything about you and they're so pleasant and there to help, you may not even be talking to a human. You may be talking to an AI. It knew from your phone number that it was you. It pulled up your data. It knew you by name. It knew all the things that was going on, and it was there to help. That's how, that's how far we are with AI today. 
So these things are advancing. The one thing that really has me, because one of the things I'm seeing, I think they're re-envisioning Plato's Republic because us serfs, they, they, in America, they, they found out that us serfs can have revival. Us serfs can, call, can create something called the Constitution. And so they're, for a while, they're going to use us to create their singularity and, and their utopia. But afterward, we can be replaced by robots while they rule as gods. Is, I think, where they're trying to head. And how many know the Lord's going to intervene on a lot of this stuff? Glory to God. But one of the ones that concern me the most, and this is from an article, quantum internet is just a decade away. Here's what you need to know. And in the first sentence, he gave me exactly what I needed to know. In the simplest term, the quantum internet would be one, one that uses quantum signals instead of radio waves to send information. I read that and I went, holy cow, Batman. <laughs> you have this 5G network that's already in place. They're probably going to go ahead and put the equipment in it on the satellites that when they turn on the quantum internet, it begins sending the information from the submolecular level at the quantum level on up. No place to run, no place to hide. They're literally going to reestablish the watcher matrix that they had before the antediluvian flood with this technology. But you know what? It's only going to resonate with those that don't have the mind of Christ. Because there's a greater reality. All of this operates on second and first heaven principles. The kingdom of God is third heaven principle. And even in the book of Revelation, it says when the locusts and all this stuff comes up, it's going after the ones with the mark of the beast and not us. Why? It can't touch us because we serve a God and we're operating at a higher level. Now, Are you having fun yet? Yeah. Let me catch up with my notes because I got here to, to preaching. I'm getting ready to preach now. We got to learn our priesthood. You've not been taught your priesthood. Even in the Protestant church, we do priesthood modeled after the Catholic church. There's laity and there's clergy. The fivefold ministry... The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. How many know that the apostle Paul didn't create those offices? They were functioning in the synagogue for hundreds of years before the New Testament. When Jesus told his, his disciples, okay, you 12, I'm making you the apostles. You don't read in the Gospels. Cool, Lord, what's that? They knew what an apostle was because they grew up seeing them function in the synagogue. Paul said, this is the synagogal model. This is what God is going to use. But they're there to train you for ministry. We don't do the ministry. We train you for the ministry. When you understand what, what happened, now, now Adam was made to be a tabernacle, okay? He, and you can't have a tabernacle and a priesthood without fire. But he chose the fire of the Nechesh. That's, I mean, that, that's the depth of the treason that happened in the garden. But on the day of Pentecost, not only was there the Holy Ghost, there was what? Fire. Why fire? To displace the fire of the Nekesh and to give us fire for our service to God. Now, let me tell you something. I am as charismatic as you can get. I surrendered at a Baptist altar at 13 to go into ministry. By the time I hit 17, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And along the way, I got this big Hebraic swirl that goes through all of it. And so I, I have seen the power of God do things. But the fire of God is not to empower you to run back and, back and forth on the top of a pew. The fire of God is for service because a priest can do nothing in a temple without fire. And God is getting ready to release another level of fire like we have never seen before. But the church has got to understand their priesthood because it's in service to God. Now in 1 Peter, in 1 Peter 2, 9, now I get to preach. I'm done talking about all the stupid stuff. Let's get into the Word. When the apostle Peter said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, he was actually quoting Torah. 
This was God's plan A. When God spoke to all of Israel at Mount Sinai, and they all freaked out, and I mean, I, I, can, I can see Moses, you know, Moses saying, when we get there, I'm going to show you a burning bush, man, it's going to be cool. It's a bush that burns, and God talks. God shows up, and the whole top of the mountain explodes. The, the book of Hebrews says, and it even freaked out Moses. That's the Mike Lake translation of the Greek, but it said, even Moses was afraid, you know. It's like, dude. When that happened, Israel pushed Moses in front of them and said, you talk to him. <laughs> he tells you, you tell us, we do it, it's cool. That caused plan B for the priesthood. God said, now, you know, all the firstborn belong to me, but if you're not a Levite or a Kohanim, which was a subsection of Levites, you give a ransom of the firstborn, I'm going to take that tribe Levites ministered to the people. The Kohen ministered to God in the, in the temple. So there was a separation. Levites taught the word. The Kohen ministered to God in the temple using the fire of God. Under the order of Melchizedek, which was God taking us back to plan A, we are a nation of priests. We are this holy nation. In fact, in Revelation where it says we're kings and priests unto God, that's really a bad translation. It literally says we are a kingdom of priests unto our God. You're a priest. You're a priest and you're a walking tabernacle. All you need is fire to begin to function. Let that sink in for a minute. All you need is fire to function. That's why the fire of God is so important. And we get it so wrong in many of our theologies. Here a few years ago, there was a song went through said, you know, you keep the fire burning. That is not what the word says. God's looking at us and saying, you keep the fire burning, Jack. I give it, you maintain it. In fact, the, there is a Jewish colloquium that we misunderstand all the time. I come as a thief in the night. That is a Jewish colloquium talking about the duty of the high priest that they would always put the, the, God gave the fire, they would keep it burning on the brazen altar. They had to keep that burning because you couldn't bring strange fire. Why were the sons of Aaron so immediately struck down by God when they brought strange fire? They, by their drunken stupor, reenacted Genesis 3. It's like bringing them the fire of the Nehesh into the temple of God. He says, no, you only use the fire that I give. When I give it, you maintain it. And so the, the newbie priests would be up on the temple mount at night, and they would, and a lot of times what they would do, being young and stupid, anybody ever been there, young and stupid? They would stoke that thing, and it looks, this, this big log looks like an all-nighter, and I'm going to throw it on the fire. And after a while, they get tired, and they lay down by the fire, and they would go to sleep. And in the midnight hour, the high priest would go to check on them as a thief in the night to see about their duties. And they would be... <laughs> And he would have a little pan that he'd take some of those coals and he'd kind of put it between their legs on their robe and then to put them into a coma. <laughs> Until the moment that it went Poof! And then there was a streaker going through the streets of Jerusalem. <laughs> they had been judged for not maintaining the fire that God gave. Hello. I mean, no, Messiah is going to come as a thief in the night. He said, when I come, will I find faithfulness in the earth? Will I find a people that are maintaining the fire? So if you're a tabernacle, all the furniture of the tabernacle is built within you. This is not taught. Hyper grace hates this. There's a lot of preachers, ain't going to like this. There was a procession. You had the brazen altar in the outer court and the brazen laver. Bronze represents judgment. Uh-oh. There's judgment in you. Come on now. There's judgment in you. God wants you to, what the priests would do is they would go to that laver and they would wash in that laver. They would look into the word and they would see what didn't correspond with the word and they would take it and they would tie it down on the brazen altar and they would offer it as a sacrifice unto the Lord. The first thing the fire of God needs to do in your life is to burn the carnality out of you, to burn the flesh out of you, to burn the sin out of you. 
And in many, for many of us, it's our favorite things. It's the, that's, that's what the devil loves to do. But you have trusted in me your whole life. I'm the one who makes you feel better. They know you by name. That's why there's four horns on the altar. You got to tie that bad boy down. You, and it will scream your name. You're going to need me next week. Don't let it up. Until it's reduced to ash, you leave it there. It's called sanctification. The problem in the body of Christ today is we don't preach the cross. We don't preach the need for a crucified life. You keep on going to God, wanting him to deliver you from, his problem, from your problems, and every time he hands you two things, a hammer and a nail, and say, there's the cross. But I want to give my way out. I'm, I'm waiting for another word. Brother Mike. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans. As the powers of Mystery Babylon gather to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the Son of Perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand the Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.